So I just finished watching Afam Yifuna, an Omar boy story. Oh, first of all, great movie. Everybody brought their A game on this project, from the writer of the movie to the director, the actors and actresses. If you haven't seen this movie, you have to go and check it out. It's out on Netflix now, so if you're not in the country and have been unable to see the movie since the cinema premiere, you can pause this video now and go and check it out on Netflix and then come back to this video. The award-winning veteran Hollywood actor Kanayo Kanayo played the character Udogu. Unlike his notorious characters in numerous other movies that end him the nickname Nine Sacrifice, where he promoted acquisition of wealth through occultism and blood sacrifice, this time around, Odogu preached and glorified amassing of wealth through hard work and an upright character. To be honest, the real cause of all the problems in this movie is Odogu. You know, these men, Afam Ifun and Paul, were like brothers all along, right from when Afam came to Lagos newly until Odogu decided to settle Afam first before Paul. You know, even if you are settling the younger one first, maybe due to merit or an initial agreement with the family, the least you can do is to communicate with the older boy on your reason for the, for the action, or else that's just an easy way to run your business straight to the ground. You know, the worst part is that Odogu did that right after Paul detected the fake Naira notes and protected Odogu's business from a big loss. Man, that was cold. It's just like breaking up with your girl just after she cut her family off for not supporting a relationship with you. <clears throat> Boy, you better watch your back. But then I think why Odogu settled Afam first is because of Afam's dedication to the business and his upright character. You know, when Odogu's goods were seized by customs, Afam went there alone to sort things out. Even when the responsibility wasn't handed over to him, he went there single-handedly. If you remember, while Onyisi was giving Afam his blessings, he said, Afam Efuna, if Fegom Dikeze, nge mekwa gi fe onyeze ne me onwaya. Meaning, Afam Efuna, you've worshipped or you served me like a king. I will do unto you what a king does to his child. With this statement, the writer lets us in on why Afam was set to face ahead of Paul. It's because of how Afam treated Odogu and Odogu's business. That's why he went on to settle him first. Because if you remember, it was the day after Afam helped in slashing the custom charges for his goods. That's when Odogu said to him. You know, I love how the director and makeup artist perfectly made Kanayo look way younger in the boy's early years and then made him look his age when the boys eventually grew up. Not just the color of his beard, like, I don't know how to word it, the entire detail of his face, it was as though the movie was recorded years apart. Good job there. One lesson from the Odogu character is the need for emotional intelligence when dealing with people, whether subordinate or superior. One thoughtless action could sever relationship beyond reconciliation. You know, for you to settle off and first, you have sown discord between Afam and Paul, and also between yourself and Paul. You know, some people will hide their envy and displeasure and smile as if all is well and they are happy and patiently waiting for their time. Why some others will outrightly express their displeasure, just like Paul. You know, there are certain workers that you really have to make sure that you are in their good book. You know, you see your driver, your cook, your nanny, or your boy. You really have to treat them nicely because they can hurt you in ways that you never thought of. Because Paul could have easily masked his emotion and continue serving Oisi and undo him so badly from within. Because he lives in Odogu's house and works in his shop. So at least you should have spoken to Paul before you know, before letting Afam know that he's going to be settled. And then let Paul know why you'll be settling Afam first. And also use that meeting to kind of like preach or teach and inspire him to maintain an upright character too and remarkable work ethic so that he can receive your blessings too. But come to think of it, if you remember very well, when Afam came back to Onisi's house with gifts, that's when he was done serving and was already settled. Before Afam made his intention known, Odogu already knew that he was interested in his daughter. Odogu said, I see that you are still interested in my daughter. Emphasis on the steel. That means Odogu knew that Afam was interested in his daughter while he was serving him, but that Afam never made any move on her. Odogu knew. And that makes me kind of feel that Odogu knew all along that Paul was messing with his daughter. And that was one of the reasons why he favored Afam over Paul. But then again, I'm thinking, if he knew, 
why then did he allow it to go on for so long up until the time for settling that farm? Maybe he never knew because most ogres in real life, they would deal with you immediately and severely so much that you will cause the day you were born. Even if Polo's mischief displeased Odogu, the proper thing to do is to settle him and let him go rather than upset him and still try to main, retain him in your shop and your house. You'll be doing yourself and your business a great disservice. Another observation, Odogu's wife only showed up in two scenes in this movie. Just two scenes. The first one was when Odogu was complaining of the high clearance fee by customs and the second one was when Odogu was settling a farm. I mean, in this type of setting or storyline where the boys lived with Odogu, Munyo Odogu definitely deserved more screen time. You know, cause there will be a lot of interaction between her and the boys as madame and also between her and her daughter. You know, they never even spoke to each other in this movie, not even once. Cause, you know, in this type of business, Munyo Odogu is second in command, you know. And again, normally in a normal household with the mother being in the picture, the relationship between Paul and Amaka will not go unnoticed for so long. No way. You know, they dated from when she was a kid up until she was all grown. In real life, that cannot go on for so long. You know, as long as both of you stay in that same house with the mother, you know, the mother will easily start having the gut feeling and follow her guts and catch up with you guys. No way that relationship will go on for that long if Onyisi's wife is around and in the picture. Even when she died, you know, later on in the movie, even after her death, no emphasis at all on that you know no emphasis on how she died when she died how everyone reacted when she died no emphasis at all paul wasn't goose free either biting the finger that feeds you shitting where you eat losing focus on the job becoming entitled i mean how can one boy be dating Oga's daughter and sleeping with her uh-uh all wrong now and also used her to indirectly steal from Oyisi. ah brother fear god Alex Kubo played the role of older Paul, while Chidera David played the younger Paul. Paul took out his frustration on the wrong person. The person that did him wrong initially was Odogu. Odogu doesn't take instructions from her farm, so he settled her farm on his own accord. Odogu said something that makes so much sense. You know, when the Danladi brothers proposed the business partnership, he told Paul, when you marry a monkey for its money, the money will finish, but the monkey remains. And Paul learned that lesson the hard way. You know, one lesson that can be drawn from the Paul character is the danger of entitlement. You know, as Afam continued to settle the Danladi brothers on Paulo's behalf, Paulo's entitlement continued to grow and grow to the extent that he forgot that Afam, despite his cruel past action, is his savior and is the only reason the Danladi brothers haven't descended on him yet. He continued to demand more and more from her farm, who was initially willing to support because of the guilt in his heart, and Polo got drunk on his greed and started blackmailing the one person that is solely responsible for his safety and his life, but his entitlement eventually was the end of him. Looking at the Polo character, you can also tell the reasons why Odogu completely neglected him and blessed her farm first. If you remember, when Odogu stated the three rules of his business to Afam, one was to respect customers, two was to never steal from him, and the third one was to avoid women. Boy, Polo never kept the second and third rule at all. He indirectly stole from Odogu through his daughter, and he was a chronic humanizer. You know, you remember in the beginning, when that malam hit him, in the beginning, and he told um, Paul told her farm that he shouldn't bother because he already had sex with Abuki's daughter. I mean, and not just with outsiders, he went further to also sleep with Odogu's only daughter. You know, when Odogu was blessing her farm, he told the elders around that if he was a Wayo person, that was a front left person, I would have known. So that means Odogu was very observant of the boys and their character. The actor who played the role of the younger Polo, yo. He embodied that character so well that I strongly believe that he was once a boy in real life at some point. You know, he played that role a little too well. I pray and hope that he goes far in his career. Easily my favorite character in this movie. Afame Funa. 
the supposed hero of this movie, whose name wasn't lost, who came to Lagos, saw and conquered. But Afam wasn't a faultless saint. The role of the younger Afamifuna was played by Paul Nadikwe, while the older Afamifuna was portrayed by Stan Nze. As I said earlier, Paul should have taken out his frustration on Odogu, not Afam. But then again, Afam gave him more reason to despise him. As if getting it settled first ahead of Polo wasn't heartbreaking enough, Afan went and took Amaka from him. Not his ex-girlfriend though, his current girlfriend. In real life, people have died just for messing with the ex-girlfriend of the wrong person. Now talk more of the current babe. He broke the brockhood and he did that at a time when things were already heated up between him and Paul. You know, Paul took him as his own brother when he came to Lagos newly, groomed him in the business, in the way of the streets, and also fashion-wise, and Afan paid him back the Judas kiss. For me, that was Afan's only fault in this movie. Keep that aside, there are so many great qualities to learn from Afan. One is focus. Just like Paul, Afan too admired Onisi's daughter. I mean, who wouldn't? Amaka is drop-dead gorgeous, but as a disciplined man who has his eyes on the prize, he never acted on that loss while he was still serving Odogu, cause the third rule that Odogu gave him when he first came to serve was to avoid women, and Odogu and Afam obeyed that rule till the very end. Another lesson from Afam's character, if you are going to do a job, then do it well and do it with all your heart. Afam wasn't given the responsibility of clearing Odogu's goods from a papa wolf. He, but he just made that his personal burden and responsibility. He just eavesdropped on Odogu's conversation with his wife and had a bad issue and went straight to a papa pot to speak on behalf of Odogu. That act alone saved Odogu's 8 million naira and made him find favor in the eyes of Onisi. And surprisingly, he was settled the next day. The part where Afan married Amaka. <laughs> This is one aspect of the movie that I think is not in sync with reality cause it never happens or let me not say never, it rarely happens cause there may be some exceptions in real life that I don't know of. I mean for Oga to allow one boy marry his daughter, his only daughter for that matter, ah, on the My friend blames Afam for the death of Paulo and you know thinks that Afam ordered the hit and not the Danladi brothers and for me. I feel that Afam already made peace with the murdering of Paul because he knew what would happen if the Danladi brothers weren't settled. I think Afam was tired of the blackmailing and wanted Paul out of the picture but he didn't want to be the person that would kill Paul directly. No, but, but Afam was way too kind, I mean paying 5 million naira monthly and still graciously giving Paul money too when he comes around to ask for it forcefully. <laughs> Not many people have that type of patience. One lesson to learn from the Afam situation, never negotiate with a blackmailer cause they will keep coming back. Once you pay the first time, you've shown your desperation and they will blackmail you even more. I mean that's why Tewa Savage never bothered to negotiate with the blackmailers that released their sex tape back in 2021. She just told them to go ahead and do their worst. Now the whole ordeal is over. <laughs> If you remember, when Afam came out from the investigation, his first worry was about his shop being closed by his boys. <laughs> oh god, the writer got that part correctly cause an Igbo man never played with his shop at all. His first concern wasn't about how the party went or his people, but his shop first. <laughs> the younger Afam, as someone who grew up in Onisha, is supposed to be very very consistent and very fluent in Igbo language and also have an accent, not mixing Igbo and English. You know, the director could have done a better job and selected somebody with a very strong accent and flawless Igbo. Paul Nadiekwe, in real life, he grew up in Surulere, really Lagos. So, he knows how to speak Igbo, he knows how to speak Igbo well, but his Igbo and his accent didn't depict someone that grew up in Onicha. Other than that, the younger family of Nan did a fantastic job. Amaka, Amaka moves like a proper Igbo girl. You know, when an Igbo girl is ready for marriage, she moves on to whosoever is ready for marriage too. 
you can't hold them you can't put them on a long thing you like you know dating them for years and just keeping them with the promise of marriage you know when amaka was ready to get married she just showed up at afam's place remember when she told afam my father is back it would be nice if you go and see him <laughs> and she said this why she was still in a relationship with paul the other the other amaka was played by atlanta bridget johnson why the younger Amaka was played by Chiso Mogwiki Hilary. Both of them were perfect for this character, you know, just as it is in real life. Normal rich Igbo, Igbo trader in Lagos with a beautiful light-skinned daughter that doesn't speak Igbo very fluently without mixing it with a lot of English and has no Igbo accent whatsoever. Umu Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> they got that one right. And um, this is another reason why one has to be very careful. You know, when dealing with someone who is still in contact with his or her ex or hasn't moved on completely. From the movie, Polo was the only guy Amaka has been with right from childhood to adulthood. You know, they've been dating since she was just a child. If you think you can just come in and take all that away and make her completely turn her back on her ex, <laughs> you are in for a rude awakening. I suspect that Afam knew that I suspect that Amaka knew that Afam wasn't the biological father of Lutana. You know, the writer didn't give us any hint on that. You know, like whether she knew or not. Okay, okay. I remember she said, I didn't know till now. You know, when she was crying, when um, Afam showed her the DNA results on her phone. But still, I mean, she could be lying. And um, the writer also made light of the DNA situation. I mean, stuff like that can break up an entire family in real life. You know? This is another reason for the high paternity fraud. You just meet a girl newly without any proper knowledge of her and her past. You want to get married to her. <laughs> I pity your life. This one happens a lot in real life. You know, the writer got that one part. The writer got that one correctly. You know, where an Igbo guy meets a girl, you know, and they get married in, in such a short period of time. You know, the girl clearly told Amaka, the girl clearly, uh, Amaka clearly told her fam that she wasn't over him yet that she wasn't over paul and she even went back to paul despite what paul did to her you know all that was supposed to be a sign you know to her fam to slow down let's just assume that's a real life situation trust me paul can still get amaka in his bed even while she's married to her fam you know the emotional connection and love for such a long period of time is not something that you can break easily you can't break it that easily. Trust me, man. There's a reason why Okafor's law is still being held in high regard by so many people. You know, that's why we have a lot of firstborn children not being fathered by the husband of their mother. Another thing from the Amaka character, you know, the writer showed the decline in the use of Igbo language by younger generation. You know, like I said earlier, Amaka depicted the life of the average Igbo girl that grew up in Lagos and not in the East. Light-skinned, very beautiful and an inability to speak Igbo fluently. If you remember too, when Lutana was asked by Paul, and Lutana responded with what's that? You know, so there's a pattern there, and this movie also portrayed that it also portrayed that trend very, very well. Amaka grew up in Lagos, she could hear Igbo very well, but wasn't fluent and mixing her Igbo with a lot of English. Then the younger generation, that's Lutana, that one was completely unable to speak or even hear Igbo. You know, I think the writer was intentional in portraying that trend. It's another thing that Igbo elders need to badly address, you know, the decline in the use of the language. You know, Flavor said something in his song, Gumi Igbo. He said, Ogini di mere, asusan Igbo mutan wano, osubalo yo Igbo, o Igbo amaka mano bura asusan Meaning, why is our language fading away? An Igbo man will give birth to a child and speak English to that child. English is beautiful, but it is not our language. It's my own observation from the Amaka and Lutana character that is very, very real, you know, as just as it is in real life. And it needs to be addressed too. Cause and it needs to be addressed urgently. Cause I know a lot of my friends that grew up in Lagos too that cannot speak Igbo to save their own life. You know, for someone bearing a family funa, not to teach his kid. His local language, ironic. Shegun Arizi, that's a CSP Gidado. He did very well too. You know, you can't take that away from him. 
he was wazobia in this movie you know you won't find that easily someone that knows how to speak two of the three major languages in nigeria fluently that's the Igbo language and Hausa language and also knows how to act too so kudos to him he did a good job and he also speaks yoruba too in real life real wazobia <laughs> uh, his, his imitation of the Hausa accent was okay you know it is not as annoying as the many others that i've seen in many other movies you know but the professionalism of the nigerian police in this movie hmm. oh let me not say anything sure you know i love the fact that this movie was made in Igbo language you know we should see more and more of our movies being recorded in our local languages so that we can promote our languages and our culture via our movies you know we all watched la casa de papel from the beginning up to the last season and it was in spanish some people don't even know the english translation of la casa de papel but they enjoyed the movie i think our filmmakers need to keep on promoting our local languages via our movies you know i'm super excited with, with what uh, ashaka is currently doing and how far he's going without having to tone down you know his use of yoruba language in his songs you know we need to be proud of our various languages and use it in our content too some people were saying back then that ashake should reduce his yoruba in his song oga it is you that has an identity crisis and needs fixing you know uh, it is great to see light being shared on imwaya that's a iba boy as the Igbo apprenticeship system because the system though it has its own flaws it works Cosmos Maduka, who who is now worth over five hundred million dollars, he passed through this system. You know, he's the CEO of Cosharis, Chief Alexander Chiko Kafo, the CEO of um, Chikasin Group, passed through this system. Cletus Ibeto too, he passed through this system and is a billionaire now. And the list goes on. Anyway, let me know what you think about this movie in the comment section. Let me know what you rate this movie out of ten. If you have not seen this movie, you, you are sleeping on a bicycle.